Hi, I'm Lou Marquez for the International Training and Research Center. I'm here with Andrew, and we're going to walk you through the process of actually how to fit a ball. This time we're going to use certain tools that are really important for the pro shop to measure the span. We've already calculated his pitches, and we're going to incorporate this now into the fit, but we definitely need to look at the total span. So we're going to measure between the thumb distance to the finger, middle finger, and then ring finger. And each one is going to be calculated separately to actually combine the span and make the total um, measurement for his bowling ball. So Andrew, this is a Bill Taylor fitting wheel and it's something that we use in the pro shop industry to actually get a baseline for fitting. Okay. And what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using an Ipsia fitting method which actually measures your hand but what we do is because you've opted for a fingertip type of grip in mm -hmm. your new ball, we're going to be measuring your hand the distance in between the first two joints. Okay. That's going to allow us for some room to relax these finger joints and not put so much pressure and tension on them, but have them in a nice natural state, comfortable with the incorporated uh, pitches that we've calculated already. Okay. So what I need to do is get it, actually look at your hand for a moment. And if you don't mind, this is a, unfortunately the, the hard part, you need to be able to see the distance between these two creases. So sometimes people use a grease pencil or a wax pencil. I actually prefer to use a pen and just make a little mark and it comes off with soap and water. Okay. So it's kind of easy. No problem. So we're going to make that little mark on the ring finger as well. And that just gives us an idea of where things are at okay. between these two distances between the creases. Okay. So now with the Bill Taylor fitting ring, what you're going to do is insert your thumb fully all the way down to the base of the palm okay. into this little chamber here. And we're going to get it in front of this spring. Then we're going to measure the middle finger separately and then the ring finger separately. Gotcha. So let's get you into here. Okay. okay. Just all the way down. All the way down to the base of the palm. Yeah. Okay. And middle finger. And then we're going to measure your middle finger. So the process, how this goes, we turn this around, we can kind of see, come on over this way yeah, for sure. me. We can kind of actually see that that little mark that I made on the fitting ring correlates to now an actual distance in this fitting ring. It's got a little measurements here, kind of like a tape measure, but on the outside of this ring. Okay. So what we're going to look at is how do we look at that fit? And what we want to make sure is that we're not putting too much tension on the webbing here between the index finger and the thumb, Okay. but just enough that it just springs back lightly. Okay. Gotcha. So we're going to jot down that number. So okay. just finding the middle point of that middle joint. Exactly. You know. okay. Exactly. So we're going to jot down that number. And then we're going to look at the next one on your ring. Okay. Now, for some people, that measurement can be the same. Yeah. Sometimes it can be shorter. Sometimes it can be longer. Hmm. Everybody's uniquely different. You know, there's no two people alike. The left hand and right hand are not even the same. Okay. So um, the combination of pitches and span sometimes changes. Right. So we have to take all this into consideration. Okay. I've got it. Awesome. All right. So with that, we make those notations down here. This is going to be the, the calculations for your span. Okay. Okay. And now the next thing we need to do is actually look at sizing. So because you're a new bowler, mm -hmm. um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the size that allows you to insert your finger up to that first joint. Okay. Without having to feel like you have to just fall in. Because right. what we don't want you to do is try to fit your, your hand into a ball where you're not comfortable with the the right distance. Okay. And sometimes you may go too deep or too, deep in there. Or too short. Okay. So we want to be able to kind of stop you at a certain point to kind of preset that. Okay. And that's just for right now while you're learning. Yeah. You know, you'll you'll develop your own style, your own feel later as you get more comfortable with it. Okay. And then may opt for other accessories that go into a bowling ball as well. But that's another story. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at sizing of fingers first. Okay. So one of the first things I want to do is measure the middle finger size. So we're going to use these pre-made um, hole sizes uh, for our fitting device here. And we're just going to look at how do we get this into that first joint. And if you notice, this is this actually goes past it. Yeah, a little loose. Right, it's a little loose. So mm -hmm. this is something that I actually wouldn't want. Okay. I don't want it so big that it's, you're actually swimming in it. Gotcha. But what I do want is enough resistance to actually get you to stop at that joint. And then we can, you know, hand file and adjust as we go to make it accountable for the width of the finger. Okay. So wow. not everybody's hand is perfectly round, but our tools that we use for drilling are round. Right. Unfortunately. So we can kind of custom oval that 
you know, okay. as we need. So notice how yeah, that one's too that's tight. A little tighter, a little yeah. tight, right? So we're kind of somewhere in between. That's so let's go to the one in the middle and kind of get an idea on that as well. Now what you should feel is a little bit of resistance right there and just yeah. kind of feel that sensation that you could stop right there. Yeah. Do I can feel definitely feel that. Yeah, you it does. Feel that? It really does. Okay, so we'll make a note of that right okay. there. So that's your middle finger size. Now we're going to do the same process for the ring finger. Okay. Okay. So we're going to get one generally a little smaller. Now not everybody's always small. There are times where, you know, a person has a similar sizing of the fingers mm -hmm. or have some anomalies to the fingers where they tend to be more like buttons, you know, they're, they're just a unique shape of their hand. Okay. And we got to take all these things in consideration. So we're going to do the same process, try to find one that actually has a little bit of resistance when we get close to that joint. Mm -hmm. And then we'll machine or hand file that to the perfect size for gotcha. you. Gotcha, okay. How does that feel right there? It feels good. It feels kind of like the, the one that we had on the middle finger. Okay, there. so similar type of pressure as you're, when you're applying your finger right. into it. Okay. Okay. So we've got the two fingers, we've got the span. Now what we need to do is find the thumb size okay. to get it perfect. And with your thumb, we're going to look at the shape of your thumb. Now, like, like we said, the drill bits that we use for perforating the holes in the ball are round. And we can sometimes custom oval that, so we can either do it by hand or by actual machine. Okay. So what we want to do is take into consideration one that comes kind of close, and then we'll, I think because it's your first ball, we're going to adjust this by hand and work it out just a little bit. Gotcha. So let's take a look at something that's just enough comfortable for you. That's pretty snug. It's pretty snug. Yeah. Right? So your tendency is probably going to be, if I use something like this, too, too snug, is that you're going to want to grip this okay. while, you, while you're learning your technique. And unfortunately, when you grip it and it's already too snug, you're going to get stuck in it. So okay. what we want is we want to actually select a size of thumb where you can utilize tape. Okay. It's important, you know. Um, one of the best tips that I've ever gotten from the best bowlers in the world, pros, is that almost all of them, every one of them, uses tape in a bowling ball. Hmm. And yet bowlers, amateurs, sometimes feel like they, they don't want to. And I think okay. that's that's something that we've got to kind of correct in our industry. Okay. So I want you to use tape. I want you to get custom to it okay. because of the size of our thumb changing from whether it's, you know, through use of medication or, you know, activity. Right. You know, right. you may go to the gym and work out and the next day your hands are a little puffy. So, right. you know, you want to be able to adjust that with a piece of tape. So you want a little breathing room. You want a little the, breathing uh, room. With the thumb. Yeah. yeah. So there I went to the next size up and notice how I can spin that a little mm -hmm. bit. Now, if you go to apply a little bit of pressure, go ahead and squeeze in there and just press down. Yeah. How does that, do you feel like it's now got a little resistance? Now? Yeah, yeah, it feels Yeah, so you notice secure. how it's just a little bit of pressure, you oh, can yeah. be able to hold it on. Oh yeah, it didn't take much. But relaxing it, it, can, it comes out easy. Mm. And then we can, kind of like we said, we can accommodate that with tape, and we can use either use tape in the ball, okay. or tape on the thumb. There's two different varieties out there. Interesting. And you'll learn them as we go. Okay. Okay? So, now that we've got your thumb, Kind of set there with the size. And then the last thing we need to do is now look at the overall combination of those pitches that we calculated mm -hmm. and the span and kind of get an idea on the orientation of which way these fingers are going to be moving internally in a ball. Okay. So that'll kind of help us with the actual um, pitch and the drilling process. Okay. Gotcha. So Last thing I need to do is look at how you grasp an object. So okay. what I want you to do is grab my hand, and what I'm looking for is how your fingers, the orientation of your fingers, how they bend around the circumference. So I'm looking for this natural tendency of a grasp. Okay? okay. So go ahead and open up your hand. Go ahead and squeeze again for me. And I want you to do it one more time. Okay. And what I'm looking for is whether the fingers are Go ahead and open. Okay. What I'm looking for is whether they're parallel to each other, whether they climb over each other, they're kind of pointed towards each oh, other, whether okay. they face out. Everybody's uniquely different in their bone structure and whether they have disfigurements in the joints. So we have to take that all into consideration for those pitches. Wow. So okay. you're kind of neutral, so I'm going to keep that pretty standard within that. Um, and because of your athleticism and how you roll the ball, we're going to create some pitches that will allow you to kind of rotate around it 
develop that technique for your hand okay. and be easy to come out, but still work within your natural grip pressure and, uh, and pitch angle. Okay, we got it. Okay. So I've got all the measurements. Last thing we need to do is probably select the ball, and that's on you. Whatever you're, you're looking for, based on your athleticism, we're going to get you into the right ball for your physical game. Okay, sounds good. Let's get to it.